Hi, my name is Diana Chile. I'm Violon Hosting Expert in Hosting Department of Development Center. Welcome to the first webinars for developers. Uh, perhaps some of you have already watched my previous webinar about external JavaScript in Vialon. If some of you uh, ha haven't done this yet, please, you can do it on our YouTube channel where all Gurtam meetups and webinars are available. Please subscribe to our channel, click the bell uh, to get notification about new video. So after we have released the first webinar about uh, external JavaScript in Vialon, we get we got a ton of suggestions about ideas uh, for the topics related to SDK Vialon and API. And we uh, decided to launch a series of webinars for about SDK. Uh, about remote API Vialon and maybe even about JavaScript API for Vialon. I hope uh, these webinars will be useful, first of all, uh, for developers who start to work with Vialon SDK, who need to understand the basic logic, the logic of API, and uh, etc. Uh, how to authorize, how to get data, which data means, and so on. Uh, also, uh, I think uh, such webinars is useful for technical specialists uh, who needs to explain for their customers some API issues or SDK, SDK questions. And, and these webinars are useful also for business analysis and other specialists who needs to explain for other developers about development uh, using SDK Vialon. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, the first webinars maybe will be not so interested for developers who had who have already done some good application, some good working application. But uh, the later topics, the future topics, I hope will be also, for also, also useful for you because you can find some information about uh, difficult uh, requests, difficult functionality, like for example, events uh, which used in our mobile application or dashboard. In any case, uh, Please write your suggestions, your ideas, which topics about SD Vialon SDK you would like to hear uh, on our webinars. Uh, so today we will start about the authorization mechanism in Vialon. Before we start, I, I would like to tell uh, you about the format of today's webinar. Uh, the webinar will take approximately one hour and consist of two blocks. The first blocks uh, will be uh, the theory. We will talk about the token authorization method, how it has the authorization forms and about the main token parameters, what they mean, uh, what well uh, they uh, they get and so on. And in the second block, I can show you a real examples of embedding the an authorization form on the site, an example and of a quick login. Also, I can show you some CSS templates which you can apply for authorization form. Uh, during the, the webinar, please write your questions in our YouTube and Facebook chat and and at the end of each block, I will take a look of them and answer. Okay, let's go. Uh, in the first of part, we will discuss about token authorization, uh, about the format and parameters uh, of token authorization with clear examples. Uh, so to begin with, here's some general information. Before getting some data from Vialon, uh, you need uh, to to log in into the system to get, I mean, to get data via 
API, send request, resolve response from server end, etc. Uh, once you log in at system, you can get all possible data. Uh, so uh, the main important, the basic uh, theme in uh, API is authorization method. Uh, in our documentation, sorry, in our documentation, the method uh, is described fully with uh, all uh, parameters which can be used and with example. Uh, I would like to tell you about the essence of this method and a basic principle. The essence uh, of the authorization method is using a token to login. Uh, it means that uh, the idea is that a third party uh, is provided with limited access uh, to the system, to the user protected resource, while no username and password are, transfer are transferred to the third party. So it means that third party can access only through some token, some key. A token is a 72 digital number. And also, this token uh, can be get only for user which exist in Vialon, and only f through our special authorization form. Uh, this is all for security reasons because the authorization form uh, to enter Vialon can only be used with a trusted DNS. The trusted DNS means DNS which uh, leads to violon.com. Uh, I, I hope uh, most of all of you have personal DNS for Violon and to work here, to work them, you need to set up CNAME records which are directed to hosting.violon.com or hosting Violon US. So it's not possible to use some other authorization form, only our authorization form. Okay, let's, uh, let's look what is it authorization form. The URL for authorization form is DNS, Vialon site, plus login.html and plus additional parameters. It's optional, but uh, it's useful to use it. For example, my hosting Vialon.com slash login.html or your DNS Vialon site plus login HTML. Uh, okay, let me show you this on the screen, how it looks like in browser. Yeah, you can see that I just open hosting.vialon.com slash login HTML and get the authorization form which have field for username and field for password. Just let's type my username and password. Oh, you can see that if uh, I use invalid username and password or password, the system will uh, respond about it. So let me check the correct password. That's all. I get access token, a 72 digital number. This token I can use in any application, in any scripts, in just to log in to the site. For example, uh, let's look an uh, example about login, um, uh, which used JavaScript code. So here you can see I put my token, which I resolved. Sorry, let's check. Okay, run code, login, press login and check, get user, yes, I'm just test my user. So the same you can use this in your application, in your scripts, in your implementation and etc. Uh, as you see, uh, uh, as you see, there is just uh, login page, so just HTML page. So uh, for this HTML, for this HTML page, it's possible also to pass additional parameters in URL address. 
just for example I can type axis type a new parameter and uh, I will get the token with other properties uh, so the token can has various parameters uh, like activation type validate privity available rights name and etc all parameters you can pass in your your lay for authorization form if you don't pass these parameters uh, they just will have the default value uh, you can see a list of these parameters on the screen now also all these parameters are described in our documentation and you can also check the default value and which parameters which means uh, i would like to uh, tell you about three important parameters uh, it's me it's about it, it, it's access type it's duration and activation type uh, the first uh, main parameters and very important parameter is access type you maybe you can mention that when I just type login HTML without any additional parameter you can see that here is something like online online tracking this part shows uh, the, ex the token access rights you know that user in Vialon has uh, a lot of access rights, a scope of the of the access rights. So uh, user can edit elements or not, can delete elements or not, can rename it or not, and etc. For different elements, for different uh, contents, you can set up uh, required access. Uh, the token also has access rights, and uh, the default value for parameter access type is. Uh, online tracking so if you get this token for example let's check this token which I resolved a few minutes ago uh, you can see the token will have only access to online monitoring for example you can see now that my user has access a full access for unit can create new sensor, delete it, or something else. But if I log in with token, let's, sorry, let's paste, okay. With token which have only access rights for online tracking, uh, the my, my current access rights will be limited, will be cut. Oh, you can see that it's not possible to send comments, and it's not possible to send sensors and etc. Please note that the token can only narrow current access user rights. It's not possible to extend user rights. Uh, it's important parameter access type because sometimes if you don't define it, the access type default value online tracking and uh, there is not possible to execute request some request for example you can get some information about units or you can edit uh, information edit sensor or create new elements and the system will return the error 7 which means access denied and the main problem that users has uh, all required rights in the system but the token has limited rights so for just to solve it you just need to pass parameter access type in your lay for example uh, where a useful value is minus one it means that uh, this token will have full access to account to to resource it doesn't mean full access doesn't mean the token will have unlimited access no they just have the same access which user has in vialon that's all so you can always specify access type equal minus one and get the same access rights as the user have in vialon uh, the other important parameter is duration we can add this parameter uh, like duration zero duration zero means uh, du 
oh, base, sorry, duration is a lifetime to of token. Uh, you can, the default value of duration is 30 days. The duration value is set up in seconds. So, but you can also use the duration zero. Well, it's important. Uh, when duration is over, the, uh, the token is not valid. So user cannot log into the system. But if you set up duration zero, uh, you will get infinite token. Uh, and there is only a rule for this token is that it needs to log in with such infinite token not less than one time per 100 days. And it's very useful when, for example, you, um, uh, you, you write some implementation or integration or scripts which launches, uh, launch it every time and it's not possible uh, to stop to fail. So uh, if you uh, will use duration uh, zero uh, and infinite token, it helps to prevent a situation when token is not valid. Uh, the other uh, problem which can be solved is that uh, the user in Vialon can have only 100 tokens. So if your script or application uh, create token or get, you get new token every time when user login, uh, for example, for user login 10 times per day, uh, for several months, during several months, uh, the, the token limits will be exceeded and also users uh, won't, won't log in into the system. Uh, so, uh, sure, uh, all depend on the, your task, on the, your basic idea, on the, your script application and on logic, algorithm logic and so on. In general, uh, if you would like uh, to use uh, the token for some implementation integration uh, with a third party system and uh, to work script consistently, it's better to use infinite token with and pass duration zero uh, with full access rights. But if you need to prevent user to log in, for example, uh, if there is no payment after months or something else, sure, it's better to use uh, token with limited duration. Uh, okay, uh, there are the one uh, of the main important parameter is also activation time. Time it's just uh, simple, uh, but I would like to say several words about it. Uh, activation time time mean uh, the time when token is activated. Uh, the default value is uh, zero, so when you get token, it's activated right now. But you can also pass some value, for example, some time in seconds, and to activate token, for example, next day or next week or next Sunday, maybe uh, some events uh, will hold every Sunday, so you need to provide access to your application only on Sunday or some other scheduled so it's useful to use uh, this parameter activation time. Uh, so when you already understand the nature of the token, how to get it, how to set its parameters, uh, you can move on the next point how to use the token. Uh, please let me check the chart of questions if we have before we can see to our examples. Uh, okay, I just remember one uh, good question from our users uh, that uh, asked it, uh, about issue when uh, he provide token with required access right. Let's look on our token flex, token access rights. Uh, could you please show my screen? Uh, yes, uh, there, are list, uh, there are a list of the token flex, token access rights. And um, please note, if you would like to use some uh, 
scope of the access right for tokens, you need to sum well, uh, flex values. For example, 256 plus 512 and etc. Because uh, it's important to prevent situation when uh, you have some access right but doesn't have another. For example, uh, we can specify only a token flag with this value modification of sensitive data and it's possible to edit rib detector and full consumption but there is not flags value for online tracking or view access to most data view connectivity settings and we can uh, face with situation when a user cannot see basic some basic properties some basic settings but can edit it uh, so please note just to sum up all, all of the flags. Or, as I said before, you can use well a uh, token flag with well a uh, minus one, where you can where you can where your users get the same access as they have on Vialon in Vialon. So I think maybe it's all about uh, token parameters and token nature. If you uh, will have some questions, please write. So we can go to our second part. And now I will show you a couple of specific implementation examples. Uh, first examples was about uh, embedded uh, authorization form on some sites. Let's look on my site. Could you please share my screen? Yes, thank you. Uh, let's look on my site. You can see that there are simple uh, site page, uh, like with some information about com company, about, uh, about any other information. And here you, I, I put the uh, authorization form. Uh, this is other type of other authorization form. Uh, before we uh, work with advanced authorization form, uh, this one is simplified. It has just uh, other address. Not login HTML, but login underscore simple HTML. I think I'm right. Yes. And you can see there is a small field, just a small window with the same field. Uh, username and password and the same user can type his username and password and press authorize uh, the difference is that uh, you already get the user already get a token and then it doesn't need to execute a token login request to the system you just pray for example, you would like to go to the site, to basic site, to Violon, you just g press Violon and go to the m site in Violon, into the Violon. Also, uh, the, uh, the advantage is that if, for example, I, oh, sorry, I need to log in here. I'm sorry, I have something. Okay, update password here. Yeah. So, uh, for example, if I uh, update the page or I close the page, uh, I will have the same authorized user and it doesn't need to uh, retype my password and login. Just if, you, if I would like to log out, I just uh, press uh, arrow and my user is logged out. So maybe so this form is uh, useful to when you would like to provide some demo access, for example, on your site, or some uh, quick access from CRM system or something like, like this. And uh, it doesn't need to uh, create your special form, uh, something, your custom form. You just use the template of login HTML and it doesn't need to uh, execute additional request to login into Vialon. Uh, also, you can mention that 
login uh, login form the basic login form has uh, some design some default CSS style and but on my site you will see a little bit other for example uh, blue background and also it's possible to uh, uh, to design the buttons to the colors fonts and etc uh, there is a useful parameters which are named CSS URL uh, CSS URL parameters let's check here in our documentation description CSS URL parameters this is uh, uh, provide access to URL to CSS file with some specified styles some custom styles it's possible to set up for uh, login simple HTML and also possible to set up for our advanced form uh, our advanced form just please note that uh, the URL for CSSI, CSS, CSS file and uh, your site should have the same, uh, pro the same protection security. For example, if your site uh, has SSL certificate connection, HTTP, HTTPS connection, uh, it needs to provide access to the CSS file with HTTPS also. URL uh, begin with HTTPS. And for example, if like my site doesn't, ha doesn't, doesn't have security connection, HTTP protocol only, and I will pass, we can look through uh, my example, I will pass the CSC URL for HTTP. This is my URL, HTTP, dianachalet.com. And uh, also, uh, just how to embed it, how to put uh, this form to your site. Only through iframe, iframe element on, on the page, you can, you can build uh, a form on your site. Uh, you can look here example, and also we have uh, the template in the example of our JS uh, Playground. Yeah, the same uh, how to put a uh, simplified form into iframe. Okay. Uh, there are other words, there are several words about CSS file. As I said, it's possible to apply for uh, advanced form authorization. Let's begin to our, let's look our authorization advanced form yeah here we just can pass cc url url and i will url sorry and i will type this address okay let's check sorry maybe i have oh i have a mistake in name parameter names so just some css or let's check just sorry something i think i have a access okay it's a messy cc 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 okay let's check let's do it like this one Access type, access type I, I add maybe, I just end CSS, HTTP, CSS, maybe, oh, sorry, <laughs> just uh, I try to, and I try enter CSS or L, try, 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 and I don't, <laughs> I forget about uh, the rule which I told you recently, if you open our console log, we can see that the browser says that it's mixed content. That is why I told you about that it's important to use the same HTTP or HTTPS uh, address 
uh, for CSS, CSS file and for <laughs> your site. So I'm sorry, let's open other site with, without a HTTPS connection. And because I don't have on my site a secure connection, but you will see the real, uh, a real situation which you can face or other or some user can face with these problems. Uh, okay, and then here we will type several parameters. For example, access type and CSS URL. I hope everything will be no, sorry, this one. Oh, yeah, fine. Everything fine. So you can uh, apply any uh, design which you would like uh, for your application. It's just my not very good design, but uh, you can apply uh, any one of them to change colors, fonts, uh, buttons, and so on. And uh, uh, the life hack there, you can open, for example, the console, console, and look about all HTML content and which uh, which parameters, which CSS properties uh, this page has. For example, background sites, uh, how the uh, div uh, named and etc. Yeah, that is that is all about CSS files. Okay, and finally, I would like to show you some simple example uh, to to log in into Vialon. Uh, we are just one click on the button. Let's look again on my site. I hope nice site. And uh, here you can see uh, a button login. When you press it, you login to the monitoring site. Uh, yeah, we login. Everything is okay. We we login. Uh, the code, the idea is simple. You just paste uh, your lay, you can see on the my screen, uh, DNS, uh, Vialon DNS plus token uh, and uh, token which you can get from authorization form or create to, or create to user. Yeah, mm, it may be this method is useful when, for example, you need to apply uh, a button to log in into Valon from personal account, from CRM account, something, something like this. So it doesn't need to some uh, complex logic, complex logic application, but it needs to uh, go into Valon to see what happens with units and uh, something else. Uh, so uh, that is all what I what I planned to tell you today about token authorization. I hope I haven't forget something important, but if you have any questions, please uh, write. Uh, you can write to my, for example, email, uh, or you can uh, write on our forum, you know, our forum about SDK questions. And uh, let me remi remind you that uh, you can find all required information in documentation and uh, our uh, some instructions files and all links for these for documentation examples uh, instruction files uh, we will put under the this video. Uh, in further videos, we will all you tell about other API requests, how to the best way to work with them, and we will analyze practical examples. Yes, I see the chart that 
uh, John uh, writes that links particularly to the lessons are much needed. Sure, uh, all webinars uh, which uh, hold it, for example, external JavaScript topics and this one uh, are available on our Gutam channel. Also, uh, this we, the, the future video is also will is also available on our Gutam channel, so you can look it. And if you have any questions, you can write to us to me directly. And also, here is my small request: uh, please fill uh, in the feedback form the links in the video description. It only takes uh, a couple of minutes and uh, we'd love to receive your feedback as it will help us to make our webinars more useful to you. Maybe you would like to hear some uh, special questions related to SDK Vialon. Maybe you would like to webinars about JavaScript API Vialon or some or you tackle or face it with some difficulties with some uh, special request. Please describe it and uh, we will try uh, to provide uh, detailed information and nice, practical, useful examples uh, for you. Thank you for joining the webinar today. Uh, thanks that you uh, watch it, watched it and see you at the next online events.